We all start somewhere. We start with the day. We start with him. We start with family. We start with a lesson. And the perfect wave. We start here and here. We start at your office and your home. We start with the connections that matter the most. The ones that move us, change us, inspire us. In an ever-expanding world, personal connections are what tie everything together, what ties us together. We all start somewhere. At GTA, we start with you. Buenas and half a day, everyone, and welcome to the League of Legends UOG Spring Tournament. I am here, Damon Michael, with my constant co-host. Half a day, everybody. My name is Winston, also known as Wantoon. And today we have an action-packed game of the Drex's Uncles versus the UOG Janitors. And of course, this stream is not going to be able to be done without the help of our sponsors. Who are they, Winston? Of course, we'd like to thank our sponsors, GTA. Global Recycling Center, Pacific Federal Management, NACE Esports, Pacific Data Systems, MacTech Guam, Twitch, Lottie Esports League, EOG Endowment Foundation, University of Guam Trans Store, Heavy Hitters, and Micronesian Brokers Incorporated. Of course, with, that, not, with your gratitude and help this, these sponsors, we appreciate everything that you guys do for us because it allows us to provide the constant stream for these games. And it looks like Draft is ready to go as we get into the game of Drex's Uncles versus UOG Janitors. So it looks like uh, the coin toss was created and on the first game and we do see Drex's Uncles have decided to go with blue. Uh, we're going with blue side while Yoji janitors have opt um, of course losing the coin, coin toss here Winston they have opted into red side of course of course so let's get into the game starting with it looks like on the side of Drex's uncles they're gonna go ahead and go with the opening ban of what it looks like to be twitch I think it's Twitch. It's looking like Twitch? Yes, it's Twitch. It's looking like a Twitch angle here. And from what I understand, Yoji Janitor's current ADC, uh, Rylan or um, Hycon, he is a Twitch main for sure. Yes. So uh, this is something that they just want to get rid of and make sure that he doesn't get to get play his comfort picks. And of course, on the side of Yoji, we're just waiting for what they're going to go with. But it looks like they're going to go ahead and go with the Belvet ban. Belveth, man. Uh, Quan plays this, uh, the jungler for Drex's uncles. Actually played Belveth last stream during one of the scrims, and he showed his dominant prowess on the champion itself. And on the side of Drex's uncles, it looks like they're going to go for the Lux ban. Lux ban, a denial of the Yoji janitor's support. X Skyla plays a lot of Lux. Definitely. Um, Lux is one of her be best champions. She is an enchanter slash mage type kind of player. So getting rid of that uh, Lux, who did just recently get a few buffs, uh, probably is a very good ban uh, that Drex's uncles do not want to have to face. And on the side of Yoji, it looks like they're going for the Lucian ban. Um, Lucian, a very good early game champion and one of Dunna's most played champions. Uh, looking to deny that from him as well. And on the side of Drex's uncles, looking to deny the Janna, um, another enchanted support, which is also a denial of X Skyla's champ pool. Definitely. It looks like they are trying to pinch uh, the bot lane here from the side of UOG. Uh, they do not want them to have the most advantageous uh, picks that they could get. And on the side of UOG, they're looking to last van the Ari, which is a denial of Ice Chi. Uh, Ice Chi, uh, one of the new players on Drex's uncles. Uh, very good display of Ari on the last stream. Uh, absolutely took over that game and dominated. Definitely. And on top of this, it looks like the picks are already coming in. And it um, looks like Drex's Uncles is going with the Seraphine pick. 
A uh, very interesting pick, I, I swear. Um, it, it's something that uh, their sub support does play. Uh, Drea Kupo, she is very good and very, uh, knows Seraphine to a T. And on the side of EOG, it, it looks like they are going to go with the Karma and Ezreal pick. Um, Karma, very comfortable pick for Xkyla. Again, she is a Enchanter support player. And Ezreal pick for Hykon. Def definitely, Ezreal is one of those champions that you play with uh, enchanters that just allows him, like the Karma Ezreal lane at least, it's very poke heavy. So they're looking to kind of just try to push out um, the side of Drex's uncles uh, against this Seraphine and Ash to make sure that they can kind of go out even and neutral in lane. And as you say, that looks like both junglers have been revealed on the side of Drex's uncles. It looks like they are going for the Kindred pick. And on the side of EOG Janders, it looks like they're going for the Volibear pick. Definitely, Volibear is a very strong pick in the current meta. Uh, very, very good at not even just being a jungler, but also being in top lane where he becomes this like super tank uh, that nobody wants, to, nobody wants to deal with. Right. And on the side of Yoji, it looks like they're going for an Aatrox ban. Um, Drex has been playing a lot of Aatrox, uh, so it's another denial of one of Drex's champions. And on the side of Drex's uncles, they are going for the Silas ban which is a very comfortable pick for the side of EOG janitors. Um, and just a very good denial of Silas's ability to steal ultimates as um, there are a lot of good ultimates to steal on the side of Jack's knuckles. Uh, definitely agree. Uh, Winston, the mid laner for the UOG janitors, he has been playing a lot of Silas. It's probably one of his most comfortable picks in the mid lane. So they're really trying to figure out like which champion. And it looks like <coughs> Yoji is going for the Fiora ban for the last ban. Um, another one of Jex's um, comfort picks on the top lane. He has been playing it a lot. And Fiora is just a very potent champion, able to 1v1 anybody and just be a very good split pushing beast. Definitely agree uh, with that uh, that ban. Uh, nobody wants to deal with uh, the, f uh, the, si the picks of Olaf and everything like that. Um, and on the side of EOG, it looks like they're going for the blind pick, Orianna pick for their mid lane. Um, Orianna, a uh, pretty good control mage, um, especially into this team comp where it looks like they're going to be very squishy. And as you said, that mid lane is going for the Hui pick and top lane is going for the Yone pick. Uh, looking at their team right now, it looks like they're going to be very uh, squishy and kind of just like very fragile team, but it looks like they're going to be poking out a lot as uh, the Hui and the Seraphine uh, abilities just um, allow them to do that. Definitely, and outside of Yoji Janitors, they look like they're gonna pick up the Malphite to round off their composition here. Malphite, really good into a lot of these uh, triple AD carry comps that they have. For ne not necessarily Marksmen, but the fact that they have Ash, Kindred, and Yone all together, um, it shows it's gonna be a very dominant in the AD uh, um, on hit attack. So Malphite here to basically counter those triple ADCs. Right. And now, uh, Tell me, what do you think about both comps, and how do you feel like both comps are going to be in this game? Right. So on the side of Jackets Uncles, as I mentioned earlier, um, they're looking to be mostly sort of kind of like a poke out team, kind of like forcing UOG Janners to kind of go to them uh, with the Hui bait, able to just poke them out from long range. Same thing with Seraphine with the lockdown, with her double E and her ultimate, as well as Ash just with the slow and her um, stuns. And um, on the side of EOG Janders, it looks like they have very good engage with the Malphite and the Volibear. And Orianna just able to kind of capitalize on that, putting her ball on one of the engagers and to just um, combo off with that. Definitely. Um, EOG Janders do, do have a very solid all-in comp, you know, uh, with that Malphite engage uh, going straight into being able to target any of those ADCs. Uh, probably, uh, probably don't. Sorry. Dominantly, they do not want to target that Kindred because, of course, Kindred has the ultimate that will stop basically the deaths of the engage. But it's going to be very exciting. I'm very see, uh, ready to see how both teams play their compositions. And it looks like game is ready to go. So let's go ahead and get into game one of Drex's Uncles versus Yoji Janitors. All right, so it looks like uh, both teams are ready to go. And... Um, I'm very excited to see this because, you know, the OG janitors, they are like uh, the B team, basically, for right. EOG. Like, yeah. um, 
Like, there are three teams that Yoji is uh, being able to display, and this is, like, I guess their quote-unquote B team, which is, uh, they're still a recreational team, but not very, um, like, they're almost competitive level, but not at the competitive level because of some of those players aren't, Correct. Yeah. Aren't, like, aren't ready or are still need a little more practice for sure. And we do see here that Quan Plays is getting a few trade onto Royal Clash 670 here as Volley Bear. Uh, both of them trying to get some early uh, vision so that they can get some information on what the juggler is starting. Uh, we do see uh, that, um, of course, uh, on the side of Drex's uncles, uh, it does look like their main support uh, is not playing today. It's actually going to be Drea Kupo or Dre Yaya. Uh, she will be playing in uh, in place for Ponkins, right. which is very interesting. Um, Ponkins is their main support at the moment, I, but uh, from what I heard, he's going to have uh, some issues where he's not going to be able to play for the first ga uh, couple of games. Right. <laughs> uh, very interesting uh, to go with the Drea and Dunna bot lane. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, and, and it's funny to think that too, because they have Drekstar, who we all know is a, is a support main. Right. So it's like seeing him in the top lane and not just pl and not playing with uh, with Drea in the bot lane. It's very interesting. But we do see both junglers are going to start in their own red quadrants. Uh, Volley Bear. Uh, they do. It looks like. DU does happen to get a, a ward onto the Raptor pits, so they are going to be able to spot Royal Clash as he does go for his Raptors. Looks like bot lane's going to go ahead and take a... F uh, they're trying to fight for that level 2 advantage here. Uh, Ezreal and Karma trying to get as much poke as possible from Seraphine eating it. So they're gonna, it looks like the side of Yoji Janitors are going to get the first level two and not able to really capitalize on that push but it looks like already wa uh, wonton and ice chi going at it in the mid lane ice chi is already taking advantage and getting the best of the trades was how did how do you feel about Huey, this new champion that just came out not too long ago you know it's one of the fairly newer ones right so Huey, um very um i'd say pretty annoying champion just with his long range and um he has a very good um kind of just like disengaging like abilities to like make your lane get off them with just like that fear and uh, that crushing mod that he has. Um, very, uh, pretty safe champion if you know how to play him. Um, yeah. Definitely. It looks like Ice Chi is really uh, taking a lot of uh, health and resources off of the Orianna here. Um, I This Hui champion has like 10 abilities, man. And it's so insane because you never know what ability he's going to use because he's not as predictable as most champions like the Orianna who have a very one-dimensional playstyle. She has this ball and wherever the ball is, that's where the abilities that's, yeah, come that's from. Like, that's where yeah. the abilities are going to come from. And it looks like Ice Chi is already going to get the first blood onto Wonton. Here's Orianna. Uh, it looks like Wonton just taking a little bit of a bad trade, getting poked out early on, really making it difficult for him to play this lane. Right. And it looks like we're, um, something I did uh, happen to catch, uh, Ezreal here are, has actually opted into the first strike build, which means he's looking to really get that poke early on, maybe play like a lethality variant of Ezreal. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Have you ever played this kind of version of Ezreal? Um, me personally, I have not because I'm not a very big ADC player. Mm -hmm. But why don't you tell me more about how this build works and um, you know what differences does it make from like other Ezreal builds? Well, I mean, uh, you know, I, I am an ADC main, so yeah. it's like this kind of build with this first strike build. Um, it really, it, the best part about it is that Ezreal has such long range with his abilities, uh, so that it makes it when one player, uh, the player that's playing Ezreal hits these abilities with first strike, they're gonna have like a massive up, um, upfront amount of damage. As we do see here, Ezreal does sh uh, shift forward, trying to get a little bit of damage onto Dunna here, and Hikon. Getting a little bit of a good trade. Uh, that was a well-placed uh, arcane shift into the WQ by Ezreal, able to get a f uh, some damage. But Seraphine, being the, the enchantress that she is, kind of helping Ash live with the shields and the heals, uh, making sure that their poke isn't really getting to them. Right. Uh, Karma does land a Q there. Perfectly great RQ by Karma. Uh, but again, look at the damage. It's just Seraphine just keeping her alive. Um, it, uh, one thing do, uh, that we do need to take a note of is when you're playing uh, versus Kindred, 
Right. Kindred uh, is one of those champions that kind of has a predictable uh, path. And well, as I see this, we do see Royal Clash going up here into the top lane. He's going to get this gang on to Yone. Gets the stun off. Both champions, both Duafi and Yone are trying to get the first blood on here, on, or the second kill onto Yone, but they're just not able to get it. Yone goes back in, gets the first kill. Qu double, wow. And Quan plays, able to get the kill re on the counter gank on the side of Drex's uncles. Very good roam there by Hui. Um, yeah. Definitely a very good roam by Hui there. He was, uh, Wade does have this one champion that we saw where it's like he, he drops this like flame pillar where it's like a Swain W from like halfway across maps. Yeah. Well, not really, but it has a small It's very long range. range. Yeah, yeah, it has a decent range to yeah. it, but still able to walk up just a little bit to get that one extra hit onto, I believe it was Malphite. Yes. So successful counter gank by the side of Drex's uncles. And we do see Wei going into the flash for Ice Chi getting the R onto Orianna, but not able to get the last hit. And the, oh, there's that flame pillar trying to fish for the kill onto Orianna, but Ice Chi, man, he has really starting to prove himself after we saw his first debut on the scrims last week. Right. Really yeah. showing how dominant the mid laner he is. Duafi and Drex are here taking, taking trades, going at it, uh, trying to you know. Uh, with this Malphite Yone lane, you really want to, oh wait, Drexstar is going to go in, he's going to have to use his ultimate, Malphite is in trouble here if he doesn't flash, ulti out, he doesn't, ooh, Yone, able to flash follow with the QW, getting that kill onto Doafi's Malphite. Interesting play here, and you know, that, that just stems off of that earlier gank that the GOG generators tried to play. Um, from there, once Yone got one of those kills, he just kind of hits these spikes on items. And it's really, really hard to play against the Yone, especially once he gets those Berserk degrees. Right. And it looks like Yoji's looking to start the Dragon here. Um, kind of playing like a Sneaky Dragon here. Uh, bot lane is pushed up, uh, but mid lane does not prior quite yet. Uh, looks like Quan is going to his Raptors, but it looks like this Dragon will be secured by Yoji. Definitely a well played by the side of Royal Clash. He was able to find a free objective while Quan was kind of it caught in rotations for getting his fans. We do see Icon does arcane shift forward, but just not able to get the damage onto the Ash as much as he wanted. Seraphine just healing and shielding this Ash, really getting the better trade against the side of Yoji Janitors. And and really that's that that uh, ruin difference there, like. Most Ezreal players right now, they're going PTA, they're going Conqueror. Right. Because it's just easier to stack and just allows for additional damage. If you aren't ahead on this uh, Lethality uh, Ezreal build, it really, there is not much you can do about it. We do see Drex start getting, bullying more of Duafi in the top lane with his Yone pick, who is massively ahead. Uh, getting a little bit more trades. Yone being this one champion that once he does that E where he just kind of goes into the spirit form, it becomes so difficult to kill him because he can at any time snap back to reality, reality like Eminem once said. Yeah. And like, just take a positive trade. But we do see Volibear spotted on a ward here trying to go for another gank onto Drekstar. They're gonna gonna get the ultimate onto Malphite there, then stun onto Volibear, but Drekstar able to get the double, double ulti. A Volibear's ultimate is going to come out. Quan plays here for the counter gank and able to get a kill. Double kill. The side of Drex's uncles on Quan plays. Well played by the side of Drex's uncles. Uh, they did have that early knowledge of um, Royal Clash wanting to go topside there with that bu uh, that ward in the tri bush. Like, th what are your thoughts on that play there? Um, well, that play, um, Volibear did get spotted by a. Um <clears throat> Ward and uh, Drex is pretty uh, comfortable taking the trade because he is ahead and he knows that Kindred is in the top side able to respond to that, which is exactly what happened. And that kind of just turned into a. Uh, they were able to just turn around on it uh, with the only lead, and Kindred is able to get the double kill off of that. Definitely, it was well well uh, well read by the side of Drex's uncles, able to counteract again another gank onto the top side there for the side of um, you, uh, Drex's uncles. And realistically, this Volibear and Malphite just do not have the damage they need to be able to kill Yone anymore. Um, if we are able to pull up the items, we can uh, see that 
Yone already is sitting on those Berserker Greaves and is uh, 600 gold off of completing Bork, which is a massive spike for this champion. Once he's able to get Bork, both uh, Volley Bear and Malphite will not be able to ever 2v1 this champion. Right. Um, and we kind of do see that currently there is a 4,000 gold lead in, uh, in the 10 minute mark here. And it's really just showing uh, the veterancy that the side of Drex's uncle's team has. Right. Uh, definitely, like, uh, Drex's uncle's team has been playing this game for a very long time. Um, if you didn't know, both Dunna and Quan were, were former, former UOG, UOG coaches. coaches. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, even me, uh, during my times at UOG, I was actually playing under these uh, coaches. And they're both very smart at the game, yeah. for sure. And it looks like Ice-G yeah. is going to go ahead and do another trade onto the kills here. Quan plays pushing into the Raptor pit because he needed to get his stacks. Uh, one of the things I was trying to mention earlier is that Kindred, once you see where the stacks are going, you kind of have this idea of where the champion is. And Ice Chi able to land the long range W onto Winston, getting another kill. For sure, this uh, this way pick is really dominating the mid lane. And Quan plays is able to kind of just play this very far forward into the, uh, the jungle because he knows that all his lanes are winning right now, at least in the side of top of it. Right. Definitely looks like they're going to try to go ahead for, for a dive, dive here. Uh, they're backing off. Um, Definitely a, a very scary dive because, oh, it looks like uh, Hykon is going to go ahead and go forward here with the Arcane Shift. Gets a decent amount of damage onto the Ash. It's going to go ahead and ulti, and it's going to hit, well, chunking this Ash out. Well played on the side of a Hykon, being able to get the early trades. Uh, pings are going off here, and they're going to see that Ice Chi is kind of in this area, maybe hovering. Um, so the side of the janitors are going to have to play a little bit back. But yeah, uh, that that dive earlier. Um, do you feel like if Drex's uncle's team were to dive there, it would be successful? Uh, it could possibly be successful. Uh, I believe Kendra did have ult there. Mm -hmm. um, it could have been a very successful dive or a very good chunk to kind of just lead into something else uh, later. Um, but yeah, I feel like it could have worked. Definitely, I, I do uh, I do agree that maybe uh, with how strong they are, they would be able to pull off a successful drive, dive. But it's just the champion picks that decided that Janitors has that if they make one mistake on Kendra Yone, Definitely, they'd be dogpiled with all that CC that yeah. would probably kill them under turret, giving away a huge shutdown to the tanks. Uh, we're, we are going to see the side of the OG trying to get some early vision, try to make sure that they know what's going on. But you see Quan plays here trying to fight Winston. He's going to get the Q off and get another kill onto the Orianna. And this is just Quan being so strong. You like, And uh, with Ice Chi, that it's just now... The mid jungle and top side for janitors just does not have the ability to play far forward. Right. Uh, looks like Drex's uncles, after getting the kill onto their mid laner, are going to go ahead and just take the free objective here of Drake. Good rotations, good plays so far for the side of Drex's uncles with a 6,000 gold lead at the moment. So, what's it? Tell me. Wow. How does Yoji J get back into this game? Well, um, obviously, uh, all lanes are, are for, especially on the side of mid, jungle, and top, they are kind of dominating their laners. They're all pretty strong. Mm -hmm. um, at this point, I feel like Yoji kind of just has to play off of engages, off their uh, Malphite or Volibear, and kind of just wait for them to make mistakes. Uh, other than that, they just need to farm hard and try to salvage whatever they can. Because obviously we they are not able to kind of just fight these people for free as they are very strong. Definitely, uh, the, the, there is a massive five thousand gold lead right now in uh, fourteen minutes into the game. So if if UOG janitors do want to find an opportunity, it is probably going to be trying to kill this bot lane of Ash and Seraphine. Maybe trying to send Malphite down there to get some TPs. They need this Ezreal to get as much damage, or even their Orianna to just get a little bit of gold into their pockets so that they can try to 1v5, 1v9 the, the, the competition at the moment. Right. Uh, but it looks like Quan and them are going to go ahead and rotate towards this Rift Herald. Another free objective for the camp, but we see Royal Clash is going to go in, and he's not going to hit the smite to try to kill the Rift Herald, but very uh, interesting play on the side of Royal Clash there. Um, he, he didn't have any side lane presence, so he, he had nobody to be able to help him there. Yeah, right. 
<clears throat> uh, and that all that did was just give a free kill and an extra objective to the side of Drex's uncles. And right now, it's looking like a very hard stomp, but there it's always possible for a comeback. You know, League of Legends is a game of opportunities. And we're going to see Ice Chi already going for the opportunity to kill onto Winston again. And that champion is just so strong. Definitely something uh, like has unbelievable upfront damage with his combos. Uh, sometimes you just don't know what you're going to get out of that champion. For sure. Right, yeah. Things are going a little smooth for side of Drex's uncles. They are trying to find Royal Clash Zero here into his jungle. Uh, they're going to go ahead and kill him on the turret. Drex pushing into the Yone, getting the ulti and the EQ. Uh, Rylan, you're in trouble. Malphite does TP. Might be able to get something. We do see the Lambs. Respite going off for the side of Quan Plays here. And they're going to get the kill. Boom! Kill for the side of Yoji Janitors. Malphite ulti goes in. Oriana Ball does miss, but it's okay. That same fight is still going to continue here. As we see, Karma is going to get the root onto Yone, but Yone gets it to the ulti, gets a double knockup, gets a double kill for the side of Wei. And they're going to get another kill on the Malphite here for the Yone. And now Mario Kart time is going in and he's going to go ahead and hit him. Yone is going to pass by, but not continue to drop. Um, Drex, where are you going? Oh, wow, he's going to get away. It was all part of his plan. All part of the great escape uh, uh, that one of the greatest uh, casters has said for Guam. The Dedido dip. He dipped right out of there. Right. I don't know. If, I don't know what kind of game Drex was very, playing. Very, very interesting play. Uh, one thing I do like about the New Herald is it just really presents really fun opportunities for that for you to kind of just like escape because uh, you do get invulnerable when you are inside the Herald and when you are in the animation of going into the Herald. Mm -hmm. So it kind of just provides you with a pretty safe escape if you are able to get into it, and it just allows for funny plays like that. Drake's able to kind of just dip into the. Um, into Red Side Fountain, hitting the Ezreal on the way and escaping through the Hex Technique. Definitely, it looks like Royal Clash is going to have to use his ulti. Gets the smite onto Red Buff at least, so he does say, this is my jungle, you can't outsmite me. Uh, but yeah, talking about that, it looks like Woodson is going to get caught here in the mid lane and Skyla trying to maybe get some wards here from Dragon, but unable to do that by herself as she does get caught by Drex himself as well. Uh, we do see Ezreal and Huey here. Huey uh, eating a little bit of poke from Ezreal. But yeah, just, just talking about that like that Rift Herald play, like, you know, it, it looks so fun to take the Rift Herald and kind of make those plays. Sadly, I never get to do it. My team never lets me play Mario Kart. <laughs> um, they're all a bunch of, uh, they're all stingy with it, you know. Everyone wants it because you get to have those fun plays, but that almost actually costed a shutdown. Uh, for Drex to uh, just by milliseconds getting that portal out uh, that that um, Hextech Drake offers and now uh, if we do see that the gold lead has increased to 10k now uh, 19 minutes into the game and we do see DU is looking to get the second or well, third Drake the second Drake for them so that's gonna be a Hextech Drake for the side of DU getting the free objective because the UOGJ was just not in position to be able to contest. Yeah, so not really much UOG can do at this point other than to just farm or kind of just play off their mistakes if they do, uh, do have one. Um, but as of right now, looking very hard. Definitely looking very hard for the side of UOGJ, but again, it's League of Legends. Anything can happen, right? Like, right. Um, Especially when you are this far ahead on as a team, sometimes you kind of get a little, for a lack of better words, cocky yeah. when you're playing, and mistakes open themselves up. Like that play with the Mario Karting, Drex could have died, given over almost a thousand gold on shutdown, but Drex here does look to get some trade on some outfight. Uh, Royal Clash is kind of waiting. Quan is going in by himself. Is gonna have to flash over the wall. Great opportunity found there. Quan maybe trying to push his luck to try to get his uh, mark there on the Krugs. But Royal Clash may get caught out here. Slows are going to happen. Ash Seraphine hitting them slows. But it is going to walk out safely. Oh, it looks like Ice Chi and Wanson trading in the bot lane. Ice Chi is going to open up with the ulti. Might have to do the QW. Get the snipe and... That was just... 
massive amount of burst there from Ice Chi. Which now opens up DU to go ahead and start the Baron, knowing that they are down a member. And there's also no vision for the side of UOGJ. UOGJ, uh, sorry, DU able to secure themselves a free Baron. It looks like Quay here is going to go ahead and try to fight the bot lane 2v1. He's just too far ahead, man. Uh, unless you're able to get a nice Malphite ulti flank. And there's going to be an arrow onto Volibear here. But I don't think that's really going to do much. Volibear is going to just ulti out so he can be safe. And DU just making use of that Baron. Uh, getting as much turrets as they can. Just letting the minions do all the work. Um... While pushing other lanes as well, uh, way in the bot lane pushing up to this tower, and uh, top lane also getting pushed over. Uh, it looks like UOG is just slowly bleeding out here, just losing everything, and um, yeah. <coughs> and yeah, so do you just looking here to make use, make the most use of the Baron? And kind of just push up these lanes as well as the wood drugs. I believe they did get all six wood drugs, uh, able to snowball all these towers very quickly. Um, and it looks like they're looking to end here, uh, getting the mid inhib. Mid inhib does go down, as well as possibly the top inhib. The only is on the top inhib. Um, but it looks like they're looking to back off. Ash did take that hex tech uh, portal, um, and they're just looking to just shove waves and just let the minions do the work. And as I say that, DU does get triple inhib here. Uh, triple inhib, very good for them. Able to push up the lane with the Baron. And as I say that, uh, looking uh, for a fight here. Um, TP does go out by the Yone. Yone coming in. Okay. Looking to just chuck out the tower. Plays might need to happen. Root on the Yone. Yone, Yone gets muted. Whale goes out onto the Karma as well as the Asher on the Ezreal. Quan plays able to get the Volibear and the Wei able to get the Karma. Lamb's Respect goes out. Oriana ult goes out, but it's not enough. And it looks like this is GG's. And that is the end of game one of DU versus YoG Janitors. And before we get into the next game, we will go into a quick ad and we'll see you guys later.
And we are back. Thank you so much for waiting. Uh, looks like we're just about ready to start game two. But before we go into that, let's go talk. Go ahead and talk about game one. Game one very interesting. Um, on side of UOG, they did get kind of stomped. Um, but on your perspective, what what do you think about the game? Uh, you know, like although it looked like a stomp, uh, side of UOG janitors, they were able to try to find areas. You know, they were trying to attack that top side with the Yone pushing far forward. And there were a lot of good gank opportunities. It's just the team was just not strong enough. Uh, they didn't have the levels. They didn't have the items. Because um, the side of Drex's uncles were just able to snowball the pace. You know, they, they played on the tempo that they needed to play on. And it worked out for them. Uh, for the janitors, for sure, what they needed to do was stop the bleeding. Right. Uh, they had to look for other opportunities when opportunities failed. So, like, instead of ganking top, maybe gank bot lane. Um, I didn't see uh, Royal Clash go down to bot lane as, as much as he probably should have. Yeah. Uh, definitely, those were a lot of opportunities. Um, and they, they I mean, they did try to play around their top side. But you're playing Malphite. Um, that's not really a strong top carry like Yone. Yeah. So it, it gives the <coughs> opportunity for uh, DU to basically farm their bot lane. Yeah. And scale. Uh, but overall... Not a bad first showing for both teams, for sure. Right. Uh, Drex's uncle's team showing how dominant their veterancy is. They do have all these players that have been playing for years now, you know? Yeah. So it's like, it, it is what it is, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so n now that we get into game two, do you have feel like there's going to be any changes that may, be ba that may be made? Of course. So um, in terms of changes, uh, I feel like, UOG might go and try to switch up kind of like the bands a little bit, uh, kind of get rid of what the issues were. Uh, definitely Yoni was an issue, Hui was an issue, maybe looking to get those bands off. And in terms of draft, uh, maybe looking to go more towards kind of like team fight oriented picks because they are strong in team fights. Um, kind of looking opportunities to enable each other. Um, very interested to see what they have in store. Definitely. So yeah. let's go ahead and get into game two's draft for the UOG League of Legends series. So the first thing we do notice is that janitors have, uh, since they lost the first game, they get choice on side selection. Right. So they have opted for blue side this time. Yeah. And with that, we are going to see some, uh, maybe some new picks come out, maybe some new bands. Not too sure yet. Okay. So just waiting on the draft to start. Uh, UOG looking forward to see what they have here. Uh, they did choose blue side, so hopefully looking to pick first pick somebody, um, kind of like a uh, crucial portion of their draft uh, as a first pick, mm -hmm. or maybe even to deny a pick from Jax's uncles. Definitely. Uh, we're, it looks like looks there is like a, we are having some technical a little difficulties. bit of technical difficulties. We do apologize for that.
And we are back. Sorry about that, guys. I was having some technical difficulties with the draft, but now things are going ahead and as planned. And uh, let's get into it. So I'm hoping that we see something different here, just maybe something new for the both teams. Right. So it looks like Yoji Janders are going to stick with the Belveth ban. Um, as you mentioned earlier, Belveth, a very strong pick for Quan Plays, the jungler of Drax's Uncles. And on the side of Drax's Uncles, it looks like they're going to deny the Twitch again from the OG ADC Ryland, one of his comfort picks. Definitely. Um, it does look like they're still sticking with their targeting the bot side to make sure that the bot side doesn't go um, uh, take the lead by getting any of their comfort picks. Right. So, Yuji Janders, looks like they're kind of sticking with the standard bans that they did do last game with the Belveth, Ari, and Lucian, kind of just denying very potent uh, champions in the hands of the of Drex's uncles. Definitely. And Drex's uncles looking to ban Seraphine from Yoji Janitors. Definitely. Um, uh, the Seraphine pick was something that uh, uh, Dre Yaya had a massive impact on the bot lane because she was able to just keep the bot lane alive. And it looks like Yoji is going to first pick Karma, and Jax Uncles is going to go with the Nami Ezreal in this um, draft. And it looks like they're going to respond with an Ash pick and an Amuma pick for ADC and Jungle, respectively. Um, Ash, uh, again, has a lot of CC and slow with her abilities and her ultimate. Same thing with Amumu, hoping to set up team fights with their CC. Ooh, and a Nidalee picked by the side of DU. Uh, Quan plays does like playing these uh, very aggressive junglers sometimes, uh, and Nidalee one being one of them. Right. <coughs> and we are going to the next phases of the band. Uh, Drex Uncles with the first ban. Or sorry, fourth ban. Uh, it looks like they're going to go for the Malphite ban, a denial of Yoji Janitor's last game. Uh, Malphite, again, a very strong team fighting champion with his ultimate, able to set up his teammates and kind of just uh, also be a tank while at the same time providing a lot of CC. Definitely, and they don't want to have that engage from Malphite as an yeah. opportunity for ya the janitors to ever come back in any of these team fights. And UOG looking to ban the Yone, who was a very strong champion in game one. Uh, Yone, obviously, just a very strong champion in a 1v1 situation, 1v2 situation just with his uh, shield and just the amount of damage that he puts off, especially when he gets his items off. And he's also pretty good in team fights with his ultimate and his um, Q stacks, able to just knock up um, enemies and kind of just hard CC them. Definitely, uh, I, I wouldn't want to see Yone after how Drekstar played the Yone earlier. Yeah. He was able to really stop all the ganks that were coming up topside. And we do see now that Drex has locked in the Urgot for top lane. Right, um, Urgot, uh, I haven't seen Drex play a lot of Urgot. Uh, very interesting to see what he has in store here. And it looks like we are responding with a Volibear top and a Vladimir mi mid. Uh, Vladimir, uh, it looks like they're all going for a little bit comfort picks here. Uh, it looks like the mid laner for Yoji Wonton. Uh, kind of going for a more comfortable pick as opposed to the Orianna last game. Uh, hopefully uh, th this game will go way better than... Um, the Oriana pick from last game. Definitely, uh, Wonton does play a lot of Vladimir, so it is something that he is comfortable on. And we do see that the last pick for the side of DU was a Kali. Now, I don't know much about Ice Chi's uh, champion pool. I've only seen him play these control mages like Hui, Ari. Uh, so him picking up the Akali is very much something new. Right, yeah. And so it, uh, we do see that it's a very interesting comp, you know, like uh, the pairing of Nami Ezero, that is not something uh, most bot laners pick. It's kind of actually uh, counterintuitive to what both champions want to do for right. real, for yeah. sure. While the side of Yoji Janitors, they have a very clear cut uh, like Karma Ash, which are going to be able to help bully each other out. Right. But now that draft is over, let's all go ahead and go into game number two of this series. But now, now that we see that these key, uh, team comps have gone through, Winston, like, what do you feel about both comps? Right. So, <clears throat> again, on the side of UOG, it looks like they have very strong engage and hard lockdown with the Volibear and the Amumu R. Uh, also with the Karma and Ash CC, it looks like they're looking to maybe just open up these team fights with the hard engage and CC. 
and uh, maybe also just lock down somebody uh, who is easy pickings. Definitely, and we do see the side of um, DU trying to go ahead and take a cheesy like top lane uh, invade so that they can get some information to make sure that maybe the top laner wasn't just sitting in a bush there. But now they're going to go ahead and go with this early invade. Leading the charge is Quan plays. We do see Duafi trying to just meme a little bit, get some damage, but he is going to get the E over, and there's going to be a flash E onto Urgot there, onto Duafi. Duafi has to kind of flash over, and he's got to get the first blood. First blood going over to the side of Drex's uncles. Um, very good invade by the side of Drex's uncles. Um, able to just spot that um, Volley Bear and kind of just engage with the Urgot uh, knockup and able to secure that first blood and as well secure the flash from Volley Bear. Definitely. Um, the Zoafi there was kind of just emoting, uh, kind of dancing in the <laughs> jungle. Um, I, I guess he was uh, maybe not paying attention to the game because Quan plays kind of just walked up for free and they were able to catch him with his pants down, as people would say. Right. Uh, very, uh, I don't know, man, it's a tournament game. You should be uh, kind of paying attention. Right. But it's okay. Uh, First Blood does go over to the side of Drex, making this top lane just a little bit more difficult for him. But we do see that three flashes were burned for Duafi. So maybe they can call it, uh, you know, a little even. A little even. Yeah. <coughs> And here it goes. Like so if he's going for a push, but gets caught by Urgot's knockup. Sure. Uh, it looks like uh, Volley Bear was able to get an even trade onto the side of Urgot. He does have that uh, shield and lightning strike, which did hit the Urgot as Urgot started off with E. Uh, things are looking a little quiet. Uh, both junglers have opted into starting the, the respective red quadrant again. Uh, Karma and Ash trying to get uh, this early push onto Ezreal Nami, which they should be really pushing towards right now. Right. And Ash and Karma able to get a very good trade on the Ezreal for skin to use his pots. Mm -hmm. And Mumu hovering the bot side, uh, maybe looking to ward the bot jungle or look for a gank. Definitely, uh, that looked like a perfect gank opportunity for the Amumu to just wrap around there and may have been able to catch uh, the side of DU by surprise. Oh, it looks like Volibear and Urgot are going ahead and fighting each other, but Quan Place is here for the gank. And it looks like Duafi may be caught in a bad situation. The first kill is going to go over to Quan Place, getting that second kill for their team. Right. Well played by the side of Quan. Um, this is just that vision, that knowledge, and that information. Uh, we know that Royal Clash was in the blue quadrant of the red team, uh, thus meaning that Nidalee was more than likely splitting the map and playing topside. Yeah. And it looks like Bot is going to be pushed up into their tower. Um, Ash may be looking to just get some free poke here while Ezreal is trying to farm these minions. Mm -hmm. um, Nidalee looking to go back to topside on the regank on the Volley Bear. Definitely. Um, the Volley Bear did TP up here, and it looks like it's just going to be another free kill for the side of Drex's uncles. Yeah, that level 1 invade was kind of... Uh, it kind of screwed over um, the Volley Bear because he did lose his flash and kind of let the jungler know that, hey, this guy's a free gank every time if he is pushed up. Definitely, and it does look like uh, Duafi is kind of playing a little bit, um, uh, a, a little bit with the like no information. He, I mean, we know that the lane, uh, the junglers did split map. We do see Amumu is still bot side, right? So that, and thus we can understand that Nidalee is going to be top, right? And he did TP into turret, trying to catch that wave, but it's just being punished every time. And we do see there's going to be a trade on the bot lane. Uh, Hycon and Sia Skyla able to get a good trade onto uh, Dunna and Dreyayaya. Right. So Dunna looking to back here. He does back, uh, but he does have TP, so he could get to lane very quickly. And as I say that, he does use his TP and losing very minimal amount of resources. Definitely. We do see Quan here hovering topside again, possibly looking for its fourth gank up here. Making sure that this volley bear just gets pushed back even farther, but the play is called off. Uh, Quan plays more than likely knows that he is so far ahead. He needed to go back with the gold that he had in hand. Was able to pick up two amp tones and a dark seal. Right. Uh, mid lane looking pretty quiet now. It looks like they're just trying to get as much CS as possible while training each other at the same time. Um, Vladimir not a very good early game champion. He is a scaler. Uh, he's really looking to just farm hard and kind of just get as much resources as he can. Definitely, uh, especially against this Kali lane, he like he kind of has the advantage where a Kali really can't all in a Vladimir unless right. ahead or yeah. unless the Vladimir makes mistakes. Right, 
And because Vladimir has a W that just makes him invulnerable, it kind of just uh, allows him to just kind of like deny some of Akali's combo damage. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, kind of keeping him healthy uh, with the um, melee versus the um, range matchup. Definitely, we did see that Vladimir did use his ulti there, thinking that the Akali was going to try to full all in him. Um, interesting uh, option, but I mean, I get it. It's, it's to make sure there's nothing wrong with being too safe. But now he doesn't have that ulti in case the Akali does do an all in anytime soon. Right. Uh, from there, we do see that Quan Place was able to get the grubs on the top side, and then Quan is going to look to kind of just walk through this mid lane, try to get as much poke damage as he can so he can go down to the next side. We do see a movement is here for the counter gank if any opportunity arises. And Vladimir able to escape there without using any summoners at all, which is very good. Uh, that just shows how much of a powerful kind of like escape tool and kind of a get out of jail free card that uh, Vladimir's Sanguine Pool is. Um, yeah. Definitely very, uh, very slippery that champion, yeah. and especially when he gets into those team fights when all the CC kind of just doesn't hit him. He, he can become a monster in game. I'm sure damage happens. And we do see uh, Karma doing the Q on to Nami there. Ezreal trying to find any kind of damage. Ash going forward with a quick trade, but then gets bubbled. But it looks like Nami and Ezreal are going to be focusing the Karma. And uh, oh, Ezreal does Arcane Shift forward, but well played but by both sides there. But it looks like the side of UOG janitors are going to get the upper hand. Uh, they still do have the Karma providing more damage, and the Ash just able to rain arrows down right. for more consistent damage. Um, very good trade by both sides. Um, True, and as we say yeah. this, we do see that Quan Plays is wrapping behind them, and they are going to be able to get this catch onto the Karma. Karma does live with 1 HP. Maybe Ash can get the counter kill onto this. Ezreal does flash forward, but doesn't get the kill, and Quan Plays finishes Skyla getting a double kill on the bot lane. Yeah. Um... That play there, a uh, very good play um, before the newly came, um, but uh, obviously uh, both the channers able to just keep their ADCs alive and um, literally just able to capitalize on the fact that Ezri or that Ash and Karma were pushed up and able to just go behind them, go for a sneaky little gank. Definitely. <laughs> And it looks like there is some uh, chat going on in the game. And it looks like Dunna trying to say bot gap. But we all know that was Quan Place setting that play up for him. Right. And we do see a Mimu here walking past the Ezreal. Maybe not paying attention. Does have one more Q. Maybe he's going to be able to do something. But uh, I guess uh, Royal Clash was just saying hi. But we do see Winston able to maybe get this kill onto Quan Place here. Damage is going off. Winston not able to finish off Quan. Quan jumps over the wall. Kali does shuriken out and free Drake. For the side of DU. Maybe they might be able to catch him here in this bush. A Mumudu's walk up. He does see him. Uh, and again, oh. just kind of. Billy really jumps over the wall, but is going to get sandwiched by the Karma and the Ash. It looks like this will be a shutdown for Ash. Oh, definitely. And Quan Play is just uh, kind of playing a little bit weird there. Get uh, Thinking he was going to be safe to reset on one of one, probably one of the worst bushes to back ever in. Right. <laughs> and that's free kill. And it goes in the side of UOG Janitors getting their first kill of the game onto an important key member, the Ash. So far, so good. Both teams playing better, a lot better. Uh, it does look like there's still a small gap of, of a 2,000 gold lead, but that's not that's not a thing compared to last game for sure. For sure, yeah, for sure. Might be just nerves from the first game for sure, uh, uh, in the in the game. Um, but we do see Karma and Ash do getting that poke onto Ezreal Nami. Uh, and nothing really going on. It's it's been a little quieter uh, this game. Things kind of going to a scaling moment. Right. <clears throat> uh, Nidalee is hovering bot side, so she could potentially look for a gank. Both jungles are actually bot side. Uh, Amubu may be looking to go in here, but gets spotted on a ward mm -hmm. and is backing. Um, but they might be able to look for an opportunity. Misses the Q, and Tidal Wave goes off. Rylan missing yeah. that arrow in point blank in his face, but Ezreal is going to arcane shift forward and towards Skyla. Skyla is going to get killed. And Skyla just eating all that poke damage after both the Amumu and Ash missed the key, key ultimates. But we see Quan does flash forward, gets the kill onto Ash there, and he's going to try to heal. Maybe Amumu might be able to clean this up, but doesn't have the damage. Uh, both Nami and Ezreal are walking forward. 
Arcane shift forward. Let's get the final kill onto the kill and triple kill for the side of bot. Uh, DU. And it looks like Vladimir is stacking a wave here, looking to maybe push it into the tower and secure plating. Um, he does go and ultimate the Akali, but Akali is able to get away. Um, yeah. Akali, another, another one of those slippery champs. She does yeah. have like 900 dashes or something like that. But and she has a very uh, good W, kind of similar to Vladimir, where he kind of just does make her invulnerable. Um, yeah, yeah. She, when she drops that smoke screen, it makes her very, no, I wouldn't say invulnerable, but, but just, just like she uh, did, she's cloaked and you can't see you her, can't which see means you can't target sorry. her. My bad. No, it's okay, but it looks like there's going to be a double TP topside here. Dunna just joining the topside fun. Um, okay, I thought he was going to reset there, which would have been really weird, but he is going to take that free plate with Drex, and it looks like there is going to be gank in the mid lane. Vladimir using a Sanguine Pool to try to get out of this damage. Does flash the both the necessary abilities and gets out scot free. Well played by uh, Winston's <laughs> Vladimir there. Uh, but it looks like they're going to start this uh, Grubs up and try to get another six Grubs for the side of the EU. Yeah. Uh, and it looks like um, this will be, have to be given up by UOG. Um, they have priority on all lanes, and they are not able to respond to this. Definitely, and it looks like the gold is in kind of a slowly increasing now. It is up at the 6k mark. And that all stemmed off of that bot play where they missed the ultimates that could have potentially gotten them kills. Yeah, definitely. And now the tempo is in the side of you. Um, I'm sorry, DU. And if they are able to push this tempo, may we may see another uh, uh, forwardly aggressive game by the side of Drex's uncles. And now things are kind of quieting. How how do you think ULG Janitors can get back into this game, Winston? Uh, in terms of this game, I feel like uh, they should just let their linger scale. Obviously, they do have a Vladimir. Uh, if Vladimir does is able to get uh, is able to scale, and as you say, this Vladimir is getting ganked in the mid lane, and uses Sanguine Pool to escape. True, he doesn't have uh, flash this time. He does try to drop everything going down, but it doesn't matter. Gets hit by all the abilities and another kill for the side of DU. Yeah. Uh, and as I was saying earlier, uh, to get back in this game, I feel like they just need to just play it slow and kind of allow their laners to scale. Uh, if Vladimir is able to secure some of the shutdowns and kind of just get his farm up, he's able to maybe just be a little more effective in these team fights, uh, paired up with the Amumu and the Volley Bear, uh, able to lock them down and have Vladimir hit all of his abilities and hopefully um, get a lot of damage in. Definitely, and Quan plays there trying to push Amumu out from resetting. Uh, they are kind of chunks, so I don't think that the side of YoGJ is going to try to look. But Quan plays is trying to push the bot lane off of this turret so by trying to throw some spears at the champions trying to pushing them off the objective so they can get some damage ash is walking forward getting a, uh, some poke onto the ezreal but it doesn't matter uh mumu does land the q onto the kill on maybe they get the kill they do get another shutdown to quan plays and that goes to skyla but a mumu will sacrifice his life for ayer and akali looks like she's gonna go ahead and push forward more and that looks like it's gonna be the end of that play <clears throat> well played for uh, Royal Clash there. He was able to get catch Quan lacking, uh, stacking the CC with the Ash Arrow on top of the Amumu Q and the ulti. Well played for the uh, for the side of UOGJ. Now on top side, looks like there is a two level difference. Um, those four ganks that happened um, early in, earlier in the game are kind of showing to be kind of detrimental to uh, the Wafi. True. Um, the, the, that way that the early game played, it does just make this volley bear not become the impossible tank to kill anyone. Uh, and but he is playing volley bear into Urgot, which if the Urgot got ahead, was going to be a bad matchup. We do see there's going to be a gank on the Drexar. All the ultimates are coming out. We do see a move using the bandage toss twice. Does land the kills and volley bear getting a shutdown onto Drexar. No way. Good for the side of uh, UOGJ. They might be able to keep going forward. Akali does go in, does take Shirk and back. Wanton getting a kill onto Akali. And Vladimir kind of stuck to him, but they might be able to get caught and they might be able to trade his kill. Ash does. Looks like Dunna is going to get ahead and get that final hit onto Winston there. Amazing plays for both sides. UOGJ really finding these angles to find forward. We do see Ezreal is going to arcane shift forward. Maybe trying to catch Skyler here. Volibear is half health. Arrow is going to miss, but it looks like it's going to be a zoning arrow. Quan plays is going to be throwing these spears. Flashing over, trying to get the kill onto Skyler. Does double flash, and they might be able to kill Volibear too. Flash by the Volibear, and it looks like it might be safe for both sides. 
Right. Um, Amumu did a very good job there of body blocking for the Volley Bear, making sure he doesn't get hit by any spears or any kind of like loose um, Ezreal cues. Uh, very well played by the Amumu. Definitely, and both sides really pushing the limits of opportunity here. Uh, like, UGJ were able to get so many shutdowns, and this is what they needed. They needed this gold in their pocket. Yes, the, uh, the gold has decreased just a little bit slightly because of those shutdowns, but it's still about seven to 8,000 gold. Yeah. <laughs> and it looks like they're training objectives here. Uh, the uh, objectives uncles are going to get the repair ult while UOG is looking to start the dragon here. Um, all four members are on the dragon. Vladimir lagging behind, kind of just farming the wave. Um, hopefully, trying to defend this tower, uh, Jax Douglas could look to Rift Herald mid lane to kind of secure this tower. Definitely, Mumu is going to miss the Banish Toss, but they're going to get a kill onto Dunna by the Flash and the ulti. Akali is going in, doing the dashing, triple kill. Valavir is going to get a double kill for the Rylan, and Ash is on a good spot. She is able to not be touched, getting a triple kill. Winston getting another third for the kill, and Nami getting the double bubble, but, but Rylan missing the arrow. Where was that going? Field goal for the side of UOGJ, but getting a triple kill in the Mercs. Very well played by um, the side of UOG, able to um, kind of just play off the team fight. And Vladimir did get a very big chemo plague there, able to put it on the debuff onto the um, enemies, able to secure the kill. Definitely, we do see Ezreal is wrapping around this mid lane here, so they might be able to collapse, but we do see Volibear is going towards Drekstar here, and they are going to catch the Urgot, but nothing is going on in the mid lane. They're going to walk out scot-free, but back down to the bot lane. We still see Drex is caught by three of the members here, and they're going to get the kill. Mumu finishing off Drekstar's Urgot, getting another kill. Well played by UOGJ. They are finding the opportunities. Rylan to putting a question mark. I guess he's, uh, he meant that towards Dunna so that he uh, knows that your wraparound was weird. <clears throat> oh, ooh, ooh, he's saying I'm going to get like you. a little bit of a little banter going on little here. banter going on in the chat right now. Uh, Rylan being very confident. Um, we'll see how that pans out. Definitely Rylan is going, uh, teasing his uh, former coach there. Right. Trying to tell him like, hey, it's not a bot gap. I'm going to show you that I was a good ADC. Uh, we're going to see that Ash does hit the poke on Tsunami there, fucking her, uh, her bone plating. Uh, but it looks like things are going well for the side of UGJ. They are finding these opportunities. They have a lot more kills, and I think it's the nerves from that first game. They are finally breaking and showing what this team can do against Drex's uncles. Right. <laughs> it looks like Mumu is here, uh, getting spotted out by Akali, trying to get his blue buff. He might be able to smite and kill this, but at what cost? At what cost? Oh, and he misses the smite, but it doesn't matter. Oh. He's going to bandage toss and steal the blue buff away from the Akali, but there looks like uh, Rift Herald was placed down in mid lane. They are going to try to chase UOGJ uh, out of their jungle. Blue, quad, uh, blue quadrant, Ezreal ulti does going to hit two members here, and the Mario karting does, has not been activated. I guess they uh, hit a wall earlier, but it doesn't matter, but it looks like the team fight is going to go in. Doaki, though, uh, the wave, wave is going to go out. Doaki caught by the the chains on Urgog is going to get the kill onto Volibear. Well played, and it looks like now it's done his turn to play Mario Kart. How will he play this game? This is not League of Legends, and he's going to slam it into the turret. going to get another turret plate for sure. And next is going to be the in hit for the side of DU pushing forward and forward. Akali is looking forward. He's doing the dashes. They are arcane shifting forward, hitting the poke damage. The side of UOGJ does need to back and reset their health for the potential fight up to come. Harold does die before it can crash into the tower. And it looks like Drax's Uncles is uh, able to escape, but definitely in another Harold arrow does get going hit wide. By Akali. Another arrow going wide by the side of Ryland, though. Uh, I don't know what he's trying to hit but it definitely isn't the person in front. And Donna responding to the banter saying, you got me. Definitely. Wow. Uh, he knows that Rylan is trying to target uh, Donna with these with these uh, arrows that are going really wide. And Rylan responds to that by saying 50. I'm assuming this is targeting Donna's age because uh, <laughs> they do like to make fun of Donna because Donna is... Definitely, uh, but as we get into the fight, we do see Mumu does start up the ulti off and the Vladimir is going forward. Might be able to get a double kill here. Doesn't get a kill with the first kill onto Quan plays, but it's going to be a trade kill for the Mumu. Both jugglers are down, but the side of, a, of DU are just have a little bit more health. Uh, this looks like the Akali is backing, but does have TP. Might be able to TP back into this play. Maybe UOGJ takes this opportunity. And they're going to go forward. They're going to flash onto the Ezreal, but doesn't get the stun. They're going to slowing down. The Akali TP does go. Urgot does miss his ulti. 
And Volley Bear does go down, so the push is going back, but they're going to see the Akali is coming. The flash by the Akali gets the first kill onto Skyla. Vladimir doesn't have Sangwood's pool. In is in big trouble. Ash is trying to protect herself, but nothing is going to come out of it. And it's going to be a double, triple kill for the side of DU. They might be able to end this game right off the back off of that triple kill. They do have super minions spawning in the mid lane. They're going to be targeting both. And that's going to be the first Ash arrow hit onto Ezreal. And uh, Rylan, he's probably going crazy right now saying, I got you this time. And Amumu is going to bandage toss the Akali half health there. But it looks like this might be the end as DU does just go for the end. Very, very good game. Uh, definitely better than game one. Um, Yoji J able to kind of hold their own, uh, able to get more kills, and yeah. Definitely a good game from Yoji J. They were able to find the opportunities to win the team fights, but it doesn't matter. Uh, they were just too far ahead for DU. Right. Uh, but off of that, that is going to be DU's win 2 0 over side of Yoji J for their first game of this week's spring tournament. How did you feel about that game, Winston? So that game, definitely a lot better than what we saw in game one. Um, I feel like the Vladimir pick was way better for the mid laner of Yoji, a very more comfortable pick for him. Um, and he was able to kind of like secure uh, kills and um, just it just looked like he was more comfortable playing it. Definitely, I do agree that the uh, the comfort comfortability of the champions really did play a key factor here. You know, you got Skylar on her enchanters, you had Rylan on a hyper carry. Uh, or sorry, Hycon, and you had their jungler in the top lanes playing something that they're very comfortable with. Of course, the, what happened in the early game for Volley Bear was just unfortunate, but that is the way that it played. It had to be played out, uh, and they were just able to snowball off of that lead for sure. But now that we go ahead and uh, wrap up this game, we want to thank our sponsors. But who are they, Winston? Right. We like to thank our sponsors, GTA, Global Recycling Center, Pacific Federal Management, Nacy Sports, Pacific Data Systems, MacTech Guam, Twitch, Ladi Esports League, Yoji and Diamond Foundation, University of Guam Transor, Heavy Hitters, and Micronesian Brokers Incorporated. Definitely, without you guys, this stream would not be possible for us to be able to play these games. And with that, we are signing off for this game of DU versus UOGJ.